you quite likely are a part of a team that you've been a part of for a long period of time. And so the question is, how do you do team building with an established team, an intact group, a group that already knows each other, a group that maybe even has worked together for three, four, 10 years? How do you do team building in a way that's meaningful and not cheeky and eye roll inducing, et cetera? And perhaps most importantly, how do you do it quickly and connected to purpose so that actually the team building isn't like this thing you do at an offsite once a quarter, but it actually is productive for your group. In this video, I'm gonna share one zero prep exercise that is extremely powerful to lead. I guarantee even the critics and curmudgeons in your group will actually like and appreciate this exercise. And it's infinitely flexible, meaning you can customize it to fit to your group without really any additional effort. I'm Chad Littlefield. Um, I do this for a living. I'm the creator of this connection toolkit. Um, and my job is I get to work with some of the smartest educators and leaders on the planet to help them build their teams, to make connection and engagement really easy. And so I've learned lots of ways to not do that through failures, but this way is really, really good. And it's rooted in this concept of upside down thinking, right? So you've all heard like, think outside of the box. I think that's so 2019 thinking outside the box. I think that the updated version of this should be upside down thinking. And here's where I got this idea. Um, I met a guy once at, I think it was like a 5K or something. And uh, we were at a table, it was just one of those random interactions. And this guy happened to have been a teach a math teacher for 35 years and he had just retired when I was talking to him. And he shared that he gets all of his students um, to think differently and he really tries to engage them. I was like, okay, what does that look like? And he told me the way he taught fractions is he'd be wearing a tucked in shirt. And this guy, 50 years old, would stand, well, he was older when I met him, but you know, when he was teaching, he would stand on his head to say, this is what you need to do to fractions in order, and I don't remember what he was teaching him in math, but uh, teaching fractions and he was saying, um, below the belt denominator, above the belt numerator, what you need to do to solve this problem is, and he would stand up on his head in the class. I've nicknamed that ever since I met him upside down thinking. And that is, instead of thinking outside the box trying to think of new ideas, it's thinking of ideas of how can I really reach and engage my audience, right? His way of upside down thinking, he didn't do that to, um, you know, no, no teaching class taught him to do that. He did it because he's understood his students well enough to know that if he stood on his head, they would all freak out and pay attention. And so for an established team that has norms and it's kind of like, gets to be run in the mill. So you're like 12th monthly staff meeting that week or that year rather, <laughs> hopefully not that week, is kind of run in the mill. And so the way you've got to mix it up is with upside down questions. And this is the exercise that I want to throw out to you. Upside down questions are questions that you've probably never been asked, but would be really useful if you answered. So one of the co-founders of Airbnb, um, when he was first creating Airbnb, used to ask, how can we create an 11 star experience? Kind of an out of the box question, but it's really engaging to think about. So like, okay, a five star experience is like, I just had an amazing trip, went to an Airbnb, the place was better than the photos, yada, yada. 11 star experience, like, whoa, maybe the host sent somebody to greet me at the airport and take me over in a driverless Google car. I don't know what the experience, what an 11 star experience would be. But the point is when you ask that question, it disrupts people's thinking enough to bring out a new side or new thoughts of somebody who you already know and who's kind of getting run of the mill. Now, you might be hearing this at this point in the video and saying, yeah, I'm not doing this. There's a bunch of critics and eye rollers and engineering types, like they're not gonna be down for this upside down question little exercise here. And by the end of the video, I am gonna share a secret to get the buy-in of those people that might tend to be the eye rollers in the group. So the best questions are gonna come from you and maybe actually your group, but just as another example, if I said to you right now, if I gave you $500 today, what would you do in the next 30 days to make this organization better? Like, interesting, I've never thought of that concept, right? I don't know what will come out of that discussion. Now, here's the thing. If you wanna get the critics involved, the way that this works best is if the first way you do this, the first team building exercise you do to get upside down thinking questions built into your fabric in your meeting is to get your group to generate the questions. So maybe play this video for them, <laughs> but invite your group to write down three questions, maybe give them the examples of the 11 star review and the $500,000 to improve and get them to generate questions that if 
the entire group answered, things would get better, right? Something interesting would come out of that. The most important concept for an established team building on an established team is to actually rethink the way you even process the word team building. If I wanna lose 25 pounds, I'm not gonna go to the gym on Monday for 12 hours. I'm gonna hurt myself and I'm probably not gonna lose 25 pounds. If you wanna do team building for a team that already knows each other really well, don't go to an offsite all day and only do connection stuff and keep people from all the work that's stressing them out in hopes that they become more connected, cohesive, and create communication shortcuts and mend conflicts, etc. If I wanna lose 25 pounds every Monday and Wednesday and Friday, I'm gonna run a 5K. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, maybe I'll go for a swim or a long walk and eat a salad, right? I'm weaving in tea building throughout the flow. And so the reason I think this upside down questions idea is so powerful is that you can weave it into the flow of what you already do. So if you have a regular cadence of meeting, if you know you have a quarterly strategy meeting with your group, start out with an upside down question and talk about it for 20 minutes. See if you can brainstorm alone first, then together second in small groups, and then come together and put some ideas on a board all together, right? Warp and adapt to this idea of coming, starting with upside down questions to build your team sustainably over time, rather than build up lots of resentment in a group for having to do an offsite for three days somewhere and going back to a overly full impox and a higher cortisol level. I'm Chad, if you like this, written a couple books, created a couple card decks, there's free versions in the link available for you, uh, or you can pick up this lovely box which has 100 plus ways to build your team established or new. Have an awesome day.